Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all well. I'm David Paul. Uh, sometimes I think I come along to these things to double the average age. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm going to do my best to try and talk you through uh, uh, the Vectorverse system in a few minutes. Uh, it's something that I can quite easily spend three days doing. And uh, those of you that don't know that I could, don't think that I could talk about markets for three days, don't know me that well. Okay, so uh, I have a terrible habit of running on too long. First of all, uh, I have to put this up because my compliance officer is lurking around somewhere. But uh, uh, Vectivest is, I think, the only stock market uh, analysis tool that's authorized by the regulator, the FCA. Uh, I'm qualified to give financial advice. I ran my own asset management company for many years, but I can't do so, sir, because I haven't sat down with you and done that long and a detailed fact find that your financial advisor will have done. So that said, I can talk about shares that I own myself, but I have to make it very clear that although those shares are suitable for me, they may not be suitable for you. So if you're in the room, I've covered myself. Uh, what I'm going to try and talk about very quickly is the Vectivest system of analyzing shares. Sometimes I call them shares, sometimes I call them stocks. Uh, market timing, it's a controversial uh, subject, uh, but we firmly believe at Vectivest that there's a good time to be in the stock market and a bloody awful time to be in the stock market. So I want to be strong when the general market is rising and I want to be very weak when the general market is falling and run for cover quickly without a great deal of thought. I managed money professionally for nearly 20 years and I found that if I had drawdown, the clients ran for the door. Okay, and they told 10 of their friends that they'd had drawdown as well. So I manage my own personal portfolio very tight for that reason. Uh, sometimes you get out and you've got to get back in again. That's just the way I do it. May not be the way you want to do it, but it's the way I do it. Uh, so uh, the Vectorvest system for analyzing stocks, folks. Well, the cornerstone of Vectorvest, and I'm going to say it now because I've only got 20 minutes. The vanilla strategy. We want to find undervalued stocks, stocks that are growing their earnings strongly, reasonably safely, that are rising in price. And we want to buy those stocks when the general market is rising in price. That's the vanilla strategy. It is a conservative strategy. We're not trying to promise getting rich quick. But it's a strategy that works. And the, the previous panel, I heard the tail end of the conversation, we're talking about discipline. If you've got the discipline to adhere to that strategy, uh, then you're going to do exceptionally well in the stock market. And the key is the discipline. Uh, you take three things to make money in markets. One is an edge. And the Vectorvest edge is a very strong edge in markets. Two, you've got to manage your money really well. And three, you've got to manage yourself really well. The three M's of trying to turn a buck. The number one and number two, you can get quite quickly. Number three, takes a lifetime of trying. And those of you that have been at it for a while will know that it does take a lifetime of trying. So uh, we believe that every investor should know what's a stock really worth? How safe is it? And then some idea about the trend. Is the darn thing rising? Are you slugging it out, going sideways, and they go sideways for a long time at times before they go? Or is the darn thing falling? Buy, sell, or hold. What's the stock really worth? Uh, my granddad told me many years ago that the only way to make money in anything was to find the value of something and then pay less for it. And uh, that's what Vectivest does on a daily basis. We put a value to every stock on the market every single day. The second measure of value is relative value. Now, relative value is a measure of the share price upside in relation to what a corporate bond will pay over a period of three years into the future. As you know, money's always running two ways, into stocks or into bonds. If a stock has got a relative value, an RV on Vectorvest, of greater than one, it means that we think the thing will outperform a corporate bond 
over the next three years. If it's got a relative value of less than one, it means we think it's going to underperform a corporate bond over the next three years. In my own particular investing, I want to look for an RV of greater than 1.25. So we're into the little presentation, two minutes. First thing I want to look for is a share that's trading below its vector vest valuation. That makes sense to me. I want to find a share that's growing earnings strongly and on vector vest, that's manifested by a relative value of greater than 1.25. And immediately I can scan for those. In a second, I can find undervalued shares that are growing earnings strongly in all the major markets of the world. The third thing is safety. Now, the vector vest algorithm looks at the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow statement. It looks at Dividends, dividend growth, dividend safety. It looks at all those ghastly financial ratios. I'm a mathematician. I've still struggled with those ratios. Are they getting better or are they getting worse? And they've assigned a number which looks at the safety and the predictability of the earnings stream over the last five to six years. Now, if you're a very conservative investor, like this old fellow with a red shirt here, Okay, same hairstyle as myself. Uh, he's probably reasonably conservative. So he would want a high relative safety, no surprises or not many surprises. But this young fellow at the front, he wants a Ferrari relatively quickly. And there's a good chance he's going to be much, much more aggressive. So. He's not particularly worried about relative safety. He's prepared to handle those surprises. So my son is slightly uh, older than you. He's a fund manager in Johannesburg. And uh, he looks at a relative safety. As long as it's above one in vector vest, he's happy. This gentleman here is probably looking for a relative safety above 1.3 because that's going to minimize surprises. And he wants to go on fishing trips hunting trips, play a lot of golf, okay? So relative safety and relative timing, folks, is the trend. That's the easy bet. Everybody does that. You can get that from Mahala. Mahala is Zulu for free. And we put them together into the master indicator VST. Value, safety, and trend. And that automatically finds the top stocks in all the markets that we operate in. Now, it may not be the top stocks for you, because you may want to, in fact, resort by relative safety to bring the safest ones to the top of the pile. This young man, because he wants the Ferrari, there's a lovely yellow one in the window of H.R. Owen in South Kensington, by the way. Uh, he probably want to sort by momentum, not particularly, as long as the damn thing is moving. So that's the default sort. We put a stop loss to every share in the market every single day. That's a line in the sand where you need to have a damn good reason as to why you're holding it. There could be a really good reason, could be sitting above a major support level. It could be a high relative safety stock where you're not particularly interested in the stop losses. You're happy with the performance of the company. It's safe. Just hang on to it. Glencore is a good example. Went down a few weeks ago, hit the vector best stop loss. Traders would have run for cover. But uh, people who, are in, uh, who believe in the commodity cycle, like the young man said uh, a while back, uh, uh, would probably be holding on to it and looks to me like a great buy at the moment, Glencore, at these particular levels. So the stop loss is there uh, and the, the discipline, of course, is taking it. We talked about wars just now. Uh, the last time old Vlad was on the march, Polymetal, a Russian gold miner, fell from 10 pounds to 90 pence. But it was selling off for months on end. So those of you that are stressing 
about China going to Taiwan, I can pretty much guarantee that half China will be short of the market before they send the first plane in the air, and you'll see it in the price action. How's that? Half them will be short. The market will start to tick down. What do you think? Start to tick down. You just watch your stop losses. That'll take care of uh, that war in, uh, across there. Let's hope that it doesn't happen. Uh, but I have a lot of Chinese friends, and when you say to them, will China take over Taiwan? They say, yes, straight away, without even a thought. So uh, we put a buy, sell, or hold to every share in the market every single day. And getting in as a sell turns to hold and moves into a buy is a great place to get into a stock. Our top uh, stock at the moment uh, on VectorVest, a relatively small stock. It's moved from 170 to 270 in a couple of months. Uh, it went from hold to buy, sorry, hold. So it went from sell to hold to buy, and we'll show you, it's called Kit Wave. Never heard of it before. You've never heard of all the winners before. I have a little flat in Notting Hill. I paid for most of the flats in a company called Games Workshop. I was on a panel, Jonathan, about 10 years ago, and the little man, he wears a red waistcoat, he said to me, what's your top stock for next year? And I said, Games Workshop. And he laughed at me and he said, why would you buy a company that makes toy soldiers? The big ones you've never heard of, invariably, okay? We had VectorVest at Games Workshop on our database 10 years ago. Uh, so that's the stock viewer. There's Kitwave, in fact. Uh, that was done, folks. I had to do this on the 4th to get it to the guys to put it up here or whatever. So, Kit wave, as you can see, trading at 276. Your humble correspondent bought it at 170. I'd never heard of the damn thing before. Never. It's traded on AIM. It's, we believe it's worth 302. The RV is 1.42. That means that we believe it's going to outperform a corporate bond by 42%. That's quite compelling. The RS is 1.13 on a scale between zero and two. That's fair to good. So somewhere between the young fellow looking for the Ferrari and the old fellow playing golf, somewhere in the middle. RT is flying up at 1.7. And the VST was the highest in the pack at 1.45. It's on the buy recommendation. There's the stop. That's CI as a measure of the long-term trend. So RT is the short-term trend, CI is the long-term trend. We believe it's going to go earnings at 25% next year. So we've got an undervalued stock. The stock is growing earnings strongly, reasonably safely, that's rising in price. There's money to be made. I believe it's just about to go again, by the way. And I think I'll probably add to it on Monday. Forward and print, I've uh, had for a very long time. Uh, I bought it at 34. It's trading at 48 now. It's there about, it went off a little bit a day or two ago. It's run above the vector vest valuation, but over the next three years, 1.69 of an RV means there's an awful lot of petrol still in the tank or lithium still in the battery or whatever. Uh, uh, Tongela, do you know Tongela? A coal mine in South Africa, it used to be called Amcoal. Tongela is the river that runs over the mine. Uh, uh, incredible fundamentals, but it's sold off. Lots of problems there. They can't get the coal out to Richards Bay because the South African railways are stuffed. That's a technical expression, okay? Just don't work anymore. Uh, so, an energy just about to go. Looks great to me. Uh, RV of 1.63, and we have, I think, Steve at the back here, one of our members from Oxford, who suggested uh, Energen uh, to me. We have uh, literally thousands of customers around the country uh, that have got very, very good at this over the last 10 years. And if I've played a little part in that, I'm really happy. As you can see, look at these earnings growth here. This is the engine that's driving the share price up the page. And we'll find these for you automatically. You can kick the tires of the full 
VectorVisc for a fiver for 60 days. And then it's 49 pound a month. It's on a month-by-month -month basis, and my promise to you is if I can't make you money, you can stop at any time. I don't think I can be fairer than that. After the 60 days, if you want to stop it, we shall remain friends. Simple as that. So uh, that's kit wave. Still going, you see, and it's now sitting in this little triangle. The technicians will love triangles. I've made a lot of money out of little triangles. The market's going back and forward inside that triangle. It's like two blokes arguing over the price of a used car. I want 20 for it. You're not going to give me 20, are you? You'll bid me. 10. Bid you 10. We're somewhere, in, somewhere in between, we'll come to some form okay. of that. That's, that's a triangle, OK? <laughs> that's what happens in a triangle. Uh, so market's running. And you can see, those of you that are technicians, you can see this absolutely gorgeous cup and handle pattern. We technicians, Jonathan, have got lots and lots of wonderful names. He's a fundamentalist, God bless him. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, well, VectorVest makes people like him redundant. <laughs> uh, so you can see the buy recommendation coming in at 170. Uh, and uh, it moved up. Uh, and I think that that looks like a buy. You can have, look at the chart downstairs. That's four in print. That was my entry to four in print uh, from that. Uh, I could have got into it earlier, but didn't. Just got in from there, from that. Uh, it's called a bull flag. Any of the technicians here? Run, goes sideways, goes again. It's called a bull flag. Vector Vest, we want to try and put together the best of both worlds. The best of fundamental analysis and the best of technical analysis. And I saw my dear friend Zach Meir wandering around earlier. And Zach actually said that to me once upon a time. Uh, uh, he said that Vector Vest is the best of both worlds. The best of fundamentals, the best of technicals. In the search to pragmatically make a few bob. Okay, we had a great deal of effort. And if you follow the rules and have the discipline to follow the rules, and that's difficult, I'm not saying it's easy, uh, you'll be the same. That's Tongela. I still haven't got in. It's on a hold recommendation. I still haven't bought in, but it's starting to look good. And there's a, those of you that are income investors, there's a huge dividend coming. I mean, a whopper of a dividend coming. The last date to register for the dividend. 21st, Steve, of that order? Was it 19th? 20th. 20th. Okay. That's ENOG. Uh, the green line is our evaluation. That's earnings per share. And as you can see, it came off uh, that old fashioned trend line. So we. Markets move in cycles, folks. They, and that's my metaphor. They take forever to get up there and they fall very quickly. So when I say markets, I'm talking about the overall market. And VectorVest rates the overall market. And when I did this last week, the longest term measure of the trend on VectorVest was down. And for the last two days, that's turned to up. So I'm reasonably optimistic. I added one position on Thursday morning. Uh, I was here yesterday, so I didn't really do anything. But I'm going to add a couple more positions on uh, Monday morning. And I'll report on that at the VectorVest Q&A on Monday afternoon that I do every Monday afternoon. I run a, my own portfolio. Uh, and uh, they can, everybody can see the good trades and the bad trades, the warts and all. Uh, the FCA bloke gives me hell about it. but. What can you do? He phoned me the other week and he said, should I buy that? So I wasn't quite sure whether he was actually testing me out or not, or whether he wanted to buy it himself. Uh, uh, as I say, when I did this, the uh, longest term measure of the trend that most people will use was down. And that's our market timing calls. Uh, and as you can see, those are the cycles that are playing out in the market. And uh, at that stage when I did this, uh, the call was down. It's actually came back a little bit. Now it's moved, starting to move back up again. So we want to be in sync with those cycles, especially the young fellow wanting the Ferrari quickly. OK, you want to be very strong in the market when that's moving up. Now, these signals normally last for many months and sometimes many years. But those of you who've been in the market in 2022 will know that we were in the throes of a bear market and the rallies didn't last very long. Am I correct? Difficult. Difficult. So uh, 
we had a nice rally in November, a nice rally up in January. Last June, July and August, we had a really nice rally in market. So there was money to be made. And to try and find the best shares, we can screen uh, through a thing called Unisearch, where you can put in a uh, parameter, for example. This young man can put in uh, searches for conservative stocks. This young man can put in searches for very aggressive stocks to take advantage of momentum if you've got the strength and the testicular fortitude to make it happen. Okay, it takes a lot of strength to be aggressive in markets. Okay, uh, so... Uh, you know what you're gonna say now, David? Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm bringing your time is up. Okay, all right, thank you, Jonathan, I appreciate it. Uh, this is a search that I like, I think you'll find useful, young man. It's called Explosive EPS Stocks. Looking for shares where earnings are exploding and the share price invariably goes with it. Uh, we take market timing signals, and that's what it's done since the start of the year. The overall market in that cycle was up 3.72%. This was up 9.64% in that period, which is 69% annualized. Does that always happen? Not really, uh, but frequent, if you buy good quality stocks, when the general market is rising, you're going to make money if you follow the rules. Now, on VectorBest, folks, will teach you where you, a big, big important part of investing is to know where you want to be. And we have a system that looks at uh, uh, your own personality, looks at your own goals, and tells you where you actually want to be in that little matrix. Uh, being aggressive, it's so easy to think that you want to be highly aggressive, but you need to be very disciplined uh, to be highly aggressive in markets. Uh, stop losses look easy, uh, but to take them without fear or hesitation is quite difficult, okay? Uh, to cut your losses. You can cut your loss at the wrong place and the next day the market turns and goes back up again and you kick the dog. So it can be quite difficult to do. Uh, but that's the performance that we've managed to achieve in the first up cycle this year. We'll see what the second up cycle brings. Uh, we're downstairs. The place is not that busy. Uh, you can't miss us. Thanks very much, everyone, for listening. Take care.